Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing my series on taking these incredible isolated vocal tracks. Uh, next up is John Bon Jovi, and the song is called Lay Your Hands On Me. So we're gonna listen to the isolated vocal track. We're gonna do a tutorial, we're gonna do an analysis, we're gonna talk about the production, maybe a little bit about John himself. Uh, but if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. Coming up on a million subs, we'd really like to nail that soon. Uh, I also have a singing course. The course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. For you guys wanting to learn how to sing, you can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com where I also have a free singing forums with about 25,000 singers in there all talking about this stuff, okay? So now these isolated vocal tracks to me are interesting, especially the Bon Jovi ones right now because the production is off the chain off the charts or whatever that turn is, off the hook. <laughs> yeah, all those. Anyway, and um, I wanna kinda point that out along the way. I'm not gonna do the intro first right now. There's a giant intro, and it is Neanderthal. Here's boom, boom, ba boom, 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 And it's like this massive explosions and soaking in arena reverbs. But what they do is they come off this huge thing, and then they go all the way down into this. Of course, he's going after a gospel vibe because he's lay your hands on me, hands and hands on me, right? So, um, and the other interesting thing is, as I mentioned before, John uses a lot of biblical references to stuff, okay? Uh, some of it is not so biblical, he just applies it to a song. And so when you listen to this, the laying on of hands is actually a very biblical term. It usually means when someone's gonna pray for you and they're gonna, you know, minister to you in some way. Uh, and there's lots of, you know, things that go along with that. Uh, but he's using a kind of a little bit more in a sexual connotation, which I think is kind of <laughs> a little bit, a little risky, if you ask me. But nonetheless, that's the song, that's him writing. And um, I, I'm gonna just kind of talk more about it. But I wanna know one more thing. I've gotten asked a lot about John's range, what's happened to his voice and all this. And this is kind of a little later in his 80s metal career, not in his later career, but 80s metal career. And so you can hear him very, very intentionally writing lyric or uh, music melodies that are a lot lower in pitch, okay? And this is certainly one of them. So I want you to listen with a view towards this, not these screaming eye vocals that he did, uh, you know, um, on the Fahrenheit album or the, some of the other stuff. This is written in a lower register, but he's still able to pull it off. He's able to take, you know, lower register, register stuff and still make you feel like you're hearing the real intensive stuff or the high range stuff in the Bon Jovi stuff early on. So listen closely, you'll see what I mean. And by the way, what I was gonna say, sacrilegious, I don't think he's intentionally trying to be sacrilegious. I think he's a really spiritual person. I just think he was kind of, he just is, is cherry picking things that people might kind of remember somehow and lay your hands on me is one of those things, okay? So I wanted to clarify that. Lay your hands on Now do this with me. Think about a Bon Jovi song, how hard the earlier stuff was to sing. Lay your hands on me, lay your hands on me, lay your hands on me. Okay, now, and by the way, I did a version of this. Like I said, I'm always trying to, I say the proof is in the singing for a reason. I prove it with my own voice and my students' voices. So I did a version of this. I'll put it in the description. Tell me how I did. Say I suck, say I'm great, somewhere in between. I don't care, but I'm showing you how this can be done, and I'm not trying to get you to sound exactly like John Bon Jovi. I want you to sound like you, but if we have these influences, and John has a lot of influences, that's how he's able to write all this great stuff. Um, so anyway, with those influences, he's using a gospel influence right now in the, in the chorus of this song. So anyway, you can incorporate that in your toolbox for singing, so sing along with me. Lay, lay your hands on me, lay your hands on me, right? lay your hands Now, 
Now, I love his attitude. He's always got a great, if you're ready, I'm willing and able, right? Now, listen to my version, right? It's kind of hard to match that energy, but the brother's got a lot of energy. And so he's just throwing it out there right away and just letting you have it. Now, what was cool is two things happen in the song. Now, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to regress to the intro and then I'll come back here right now in a second. So I'm going to mark this, I'm going to go to the intro and I want you to hear how big this intro is. It's like a like Neanderthal huge. Now let's go back to this section. I'm gonna take the instrumentation out. We're gonna to listen to this one more time. Here we go. If you're ready, I'm willing and able. Help me lay my cards out on the table. You're mine and I'm yours for the ticket. Right now the rules are made up, man. See how the satisfaction is guaranteed. Uh, right? He's got all this extra, that was the Glenn Hughes version, but he's got all this really like a lot of great energy, right? They say what you give is always what you need. No, whoa, whoa. if you want me to lay my hands on you. Now, we talked about how much production goes into this. Even down to this part right here. If you want me to lay my hands, right? He's he's doing all the hits of the of the band. Listen. Oh, oh, oh. If you want me to lay my hands on you, hands on me, lay your hands on me, lay your hands on me. Lay your hands on me. All you got to do is lay your hands on me, lay your hands on me, lay. Your See what I mean? He uses a lot of biblical references, right? I forgot about this being in the song. And again, check out my version, guys. I'm trying to put a lot of effort into this stuff. Check out and see how I did, man. I'm not just, you know, whistling Dixie over here. I'm trying to, like, show you guys how doable this stuff is. It's not as unattainable as it might seem. And especially this later uh, stuff that he's written that isn't crazy high like some of the earlier stuff. This is really doable stuff. Now listen up. I'm a fighter. I'm a poet. I'm a preacher, I've been to school, oh, baby, I've been the teacher. There's that David Lee Roth. Oh. Now, I want to talk about that scream. I want to talk about that scream. Did I say I want to talk about that scream? I want to talk to you guys about that scream, okay? I get a lot of people saying, Ken, I want to do the David Lee Roth scream. And I'm going to play it back. You're going to hear him do it. And I want to show you something, okay? Listen up, real close. Oh, oh, baby. Oh, oh. Right? You're going to hear, I want you to hear the two or three tones, like I said, like Newman throat singing or whatever, it's like three tones. You know the guys that can have all these different tonalities in their voice when they're singing, uh, Newman throat singers. Check this out. I've been to school, oh, baby, I've been the now, teacher. What that is, so that we're clear on this, is it's kind of a form of flagellate whistle register, but not. When the chords are raw and they don't have good chord closure. Your chords look like this, right? And they kind of close up like this. When they don't have good chord closure, particularly in your falsetto, this right here is the earmark of the beginning stages of losing your voice, okay? Now that we're clear on that, when David Lee Roth did it, again, it was from over singing and He's, you know, running with the devil or whatever song it was, I forget that it happens in a few times, is it's chord separation or loss or loss of phonation, loss of sound or loss of good chord closure, all right? Now, I'm not saying it's not doable without that, but what I'm saying is you're hearing the beginnings of a vocal loss. 
So as cool as it may seem, as cool as you may want to run around and do it, and even on Scream and Growl and all these other people, you know, doing all this stuff um, that are really, you know, <laughs> it's like, like I said, it's like an extreme sport on your vocal folds. This is kind of the beginning stages of that. And, and a lot of times too, people uh, supplement that, or, or I should actually say that they uh, switch it out for going, hey! and hitting something clean or a, a real powerful high note, what they do is they you know, give the illusion that they're actually singing high when in fact it's just this kind of falsetto -y, broken up vocal thing. And I, I'm sorry for beating that up, but I've gotten asked a lot about the David Lee Roth scream and you've heard a couple tunes where John's done it. And one more time, this is him doing it again. Yeah, if you show me how to get up off the ground. Ah, it's actually before that, sorry. I'm a preacher, I've been to school, baby. Been the teacher, if you show me how to get up off the ground, 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 I can show you how to fly and never ever come back now. Everything you want is what I. By the way, those are great note choices. Ever come back down? Those, that's a, those are great note choices. He always kind of finds the right kind of cool gospely seventh, you know, things whenever whatever song, especially in the outlaw stuff that he does, he come he picks off the the, the cool notes, which is great. <laughs> Your satisfaction is a guarantee. But the ride don't never ever come for free. No, 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 no. If you want me to lay my hands on you, lay your hands on me. Catchy lay chorus. Lay your hands on me. Lay Now, I've heard a lot of uh, people comment on this era of Bon Jovi songs, saying that it was nowhere as near as good as Living on a Prayer and stuff. I disagree. I think this stuff and Bad Medicine and some of the other stuff, you know, I disagree. I think this stuff is really, really good. It's really good songwriting. The production is awesome. The playing is awesome. Uh, it's really well thought out. You know what I mean? So you guys out there that are like kind of talking smack against John, please don't do that because this stuff is every bit as good as the early stuff. It may also be, yes, at the time it started to come out, you know, uh, grunge music was coming in like this and then that music was starting to go like this. So it didn't get quite the same uh, you know, Yahoo, Waha, Yeehaw, kind of, you know, the world wasn't chasing after it in the same way because tides were changing and, and the, the climate and sort of the culture was changing musically for rock and metal and then on into grunge. Uh, but John did something that was is notoriously John. And I want to also talk about his work ethic is that I remember I was living in Germany at the time and I was, you know, going to these festivals and stuff. And John was, was actually, you know, before Fahrenheit, I mean, he was, you know, just kind of coming up the ranks. This guy is one hard working dude. I mean, kind of like my cousin Sammy Hagar when he left Van Halen and it looked like maybe he was going to lose a lot of audience and stuff. He just bam, right after all these tours and albums with Van Halen, he just went right back out on the road to reclaim his audience and even the audience before Van Halen, Van Halen and then sometimes through uh, what would happen through Van Halen and then grab some more audience because he went out and he worked his butt off to be able to um, you know, keep that from happening, from losing an audience. John did the same thing. So when grunge happened, he just went right back out on the road and he found out that, you know, okay, so he lost some ground in the United States, but he remembered that his first, you know, uh, core audience actually kind of came from Europe, believe it or not. So he went back to Europe, he hit the ground pavement, hit that pavement, got, you know, and then brought that success back over again to the United States. So kudos to John for his hard work ethic. So this guy is, is a force to be reckoned with and it's really worked very hard. So if you think this just because he was a pretty face and high bright range and, you know, got a record deal early on, no, uh-uh, no. It, he worked for this stuff, and you can hear it in the music, and that's what we're listening to. So, just wanted me. to say that. Lay your hands on me. Lay your hands on me. Yeah, yeah. Help him, baby. <laughs> it's funny. Very David Lee Roth. <laughs> just, 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 just like that. Do that. <laughs> What vocal separation? Let me move it up here. So hold on, let's get to the. Oh, 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 baby, don't you know I'm able to please? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that was. If you want me to lay my hands on you. Would 
you got to do is lay your hands on me. Lay your hands on me. Come on, come on, come on. Lay your hands on me. And everybody ain't going to hear me now. I can hear what people say. I can hear my heart say. If you want to lay them on, baby, come on now. Now you heard the stacking of the vocals got bigger and bigger and bigger to create more and more intensity. So they could have left it alone. I mean, Foreigner, I want to know what love is. You know, they had the one choir and it kind of was the same all the way through and then they kind of ad-libbed at the end. He didn't do that. He made it a little bigger. Next, next time it came around, a little bigger. Next time it came around, a little bigger. I think that's really cool, man. The guy put in a lot of effort to this stuff and whoever was producing this at the time, I don't think it was Fairbairn here. I forget who it was that did this album, but um, maybe it was, I forgot. But anyway, just some great stuff. Now I wanna, I wanna actually add some of the track just so you can get a flavor for how much awesome production is in this. Here's a solo, let's go to the cooking. Listen without the vocal. What you gotta do is lay your hands on me. Lay your hands on me. Lay your hands on me. Building and building. Oh, you got to do, baby! Anyway, obviously, I'm a Bon Jovi fan. Um, and it's like I said, I have a lot of respect for people that are hardworking and this guy is hardworking and has really put in the time, the blood, the sweat, the tears and everything to uh, have this career be that long lived. So hopefully you enjoyed this as much as I did in putting it together for you guys and please, please, please definitely stick around and check out my next video.